Welcome back to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast. Today's episode is Labor Day Surprises. We are here with Sarah Wright Olson and Daniela Rua and her husband, David Olson, and a bunch of babies. Oh, and Brian Hurtsinger. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> and oh, that is an, is that's an appropriate order. One of the babies. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, let's get into the juicy details. Uh, you, you, Danny and Dave, you told me you were, found out you were breached just a few days before your, your baby, Sierra, was born. Correct. Uh, came into the office. We try to do some chiropractic and right. massage and adjusting, which usually we do three or four times. You gave me one shot. No, and she gave you one she shot. She gave me one shot. <laughs> uh, and then that was like on a Friday, I feel like, yes. just before Labor Day. Yes. And the next time I connected with you was? At s- Sunday at 2 a.m. <laughs> like 2 o'clock in the morning on Labor Day. Was, uh, oh. You shot a quick text saying, hey, any chance you're awake? And I said, sure, what's up? <laughs> well, I, we have to preface this. Um, I, I had an OB, uh, OB who I absolutely adored. He's a wonderful, wonderful physician. Um, but he unfortunately only does C-sections when it comes to breech births. And mm-hmm. I had openly told him, you know, I'm healthy, baby's healthy. I'd love to try this as a vaginal birth. I really don't want to resort to a C-section unless we really, really have to. Um, so he said, I can recommend another physician to you or you can have a home birth. Um, and so um, I never got the recommendations because we were, you know, weeks out from the birth. And so, um, yeah, so I kind of went home and we tried to turn her, et cetera, et cetera. And then on Sunday of Labor Day weekend at 1.30 in the morning, my water broke. And I went into active labor because the contraction started. Um, was it like a very big obvious gush? Or was it like... Well, I, w- I was sleeping. Uh, Dave, Dave fell asleep on the couch in the living room watching TV. And I was in bed at 1.30 in the morning. And I just felt this, yeah, warm water gush. And I just opened my eyes and I was like, oh, crap, I know what this means. And in fact, because I didn't go into, I didn't get contractions with River when my water broke, I was just hoping that I would with her because mm-hmm. I really didn't want to get induced again. Um, so I got up and I, you know, took my wet pants and myself to the living room to go and wake up Dave. Um, and he's like, what's up? What's going on? And I said, um, I think my water just broke. And Dave exhaled and then <laughs> said, um, but can we labor at home like we planned for a little bit before we go to the hospital? I was like, no, sweetie, the water broke. We really, like, it's time to hustle because we don't have bags packed. We have River. My mom was on a plane on her way to us, oh, so wow. she would be there supposedly for the birth. Luckily, Dave's parents were in town just for that weekend. But also, nor did you have a doctor. Nor did I have a doctor, which is why I have such a pregnancy point. brain. I Thank mean, you, which yeah. is why I was, good. yes, at this point I had no doctor. <laughs> um, but I still, I, I called my original OB, and um, and I said, hey, I need that recommendation. Um, you called him at 2 o'clock in the morning? I think I called him either right before or right after you. Okay. I think it was so right yeah. before I so contacted sometime you. Sometime early in the morning, yeah. on Sunday morning. So I texted you, I texted um, my doula, and I called the doctor, and I said, I need that recommendation. Wait, did um, you have the doctor's phone number? No, no, no. I called his answering service and oh, he called me back. I was going to say, I need to have oh, no. a conversation with Dr. Goldberg. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. His, no. Uh, phone no, yeah. no, 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 no. I didn't. Um, anyway, so the three of you basically came up with one name in common. You all had different recommendations, but one name was common amongst you, um, Dr. Crane. And um, so I called him and uh, I left a voicemail and said, Hi, you don't know me. And my water broke. I have a breech baby. I, I know that you deliver vaginally, and I really want to try it out. It's my second child. Please, 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 I beg you, beg you, beg you, call me back. His, uh, you called his office? I called the answering service that oh, I just found. I Googled service. him. Oh, you Googled him and called his answering service. Yeah, or, or maybe maybe my or you or my doula sent me the number, Probably but it was that. for the office regardless. Um, but he calls me back from his cell phone um, and asks me all the questions necessary. And he How soon after you left the message? 15 Minutes, wow. twenty minutes, something like that. Well, yeah, like for, yeah, in the middle of the night on a weekend. Oh, and because he had weekend. well, because he hadn't called me back. In my mind, those fifteen minutes felt like an eternity because sure. I'm like, I'm gonna have this baby in my bedroom with no help. Right. <laughs> um. So at that point, I texted you and you recommended another, yet another doctor who I also spoke to. But um, in the meantime, Doctor Crane called me back. Um. Yeah, and asked me all the questions necessary. He said, you know, you're a perfect candidate because of your height and it's your second child and your firstborn was not a very big baby. It's 37 weeks. So for a bunch of reasons, it seemed appropriate to try, give this a shot. So he said, meet me in my office, you know, call me when you're 10 minutes out. And that's what we did. I was literally (laughs) running around the house um, with an app that I downloaded at the moment so I could time my contractions. And, you know, um, so I was running around packing my own bag 
even when he was on the phone with me asking me questions, I was like, give me one second, just breathing through a contraction. I was going to ask you, did you have contractions? Oh, yeah, then? I was having contractions. Um, and they moved along very quickly, actually. They were, you know, at first 10 minutes apart, but within an hour they were, you know, maybe five minutes apart, and it was pretty quick. Whoa. So I was trying to get a box of snacks ready for River um, <laughs> <laughs> to eat at the hospital because all of a sudden, you know, we don't have somebody to stay with us or to take him um, somewhere else. You were not originally planning to have him at your birth. No. And he didn't end up coming. N- he was at the hospital until my mother-in-law oh, arrived. Got it. Okay. Um, and you know, and I'll tell you how that felt to have him there in a second. But anyway, so I'm running around trying to put a box of snacks together for him and literally like going down to the floor into fetal position, breathing through a contraction and then, you know, looking at my watch going, "Okay, I've got 3 minutes to get this done and get myself in the car before the next contraction oh, comes." Right. So or 4 minutes whatever it was. So I was hustling and then in the car I just kind of like, you know, kind of like um, Sarah did too. I had to. I was sitting in the front seat with my seatbelt on but facing the back. River was in this seat not really understanding why mommy was oh, <laughs> doing this through contractions and dad's like River tell mommy she's doing a great job you know we're trying to keep it positive for him not to be scared of these like yeah. visceral noises that I'm making. So you didn't prep um, him at all for, for being at a birth? Well, I no, I didn't really Has expect Has he seen to birth videos or anything like no, that? No, no. Okay. No, so we didn't at all. Man. Nothing. It, he was supposed to stay home with my mom had she, um, you know, had everything happened in time. Um, and so we got to the hospital, and I was still very conscious. Oh, sorry. I got to the doctor's office. office. Yeah. He checked me. He said, you're at four centimeters, oh, wow. which I was really happy about um, because everything was, you know, it felt what it felt like, but it was bearable. And, uh, yeah, so he said, I'll see you in the hospital in 20 minutes. And my doula had met me at the doctor's office, too. So we went to the hospital, and River and Dave were there. Um, And during a contraction, at some point, Dave um, told River to come hold my hand. I can't remember exactly what you said, but um, basically you put River next to me and put him close to me. And I'm not kidding. It actually helped the pain. Yeah. It was a very, very conscious help to the pain to have him hold my hand and stroke my hair and tell me that I was doing a great job, Mommy. Where, where was Dave during this? What's going on? No, no, Dave and they were both in the room with me. Uh, they okay. were both right next to me. You were know? you doing the hair stroking thing, too? No, no River no. was, but <laughs> Dave the was just snacks, making, controlling the situation. The Dave, what were you watching on TV when this all happened? <laughs> I was just there. <laughs> no, you weren't. No, you weren't. You were holding there. my hand the whole time. I think it's fascinating, though, that you. I mean, this night timeline was amazing to me. I want to hear. I like. I love hearing the story because you went to the doctor's office. Right at four o'clock in the morning. At four o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning. It was what five was when we got there. Okay, and then, but then you end up. Meeting him at the hospital, which is not far away. No, no, it's like five, very literally close. five minutes away. But it, um, it's kind of amazing. In very few towns, do you even find doctors who do vaginal right. breech birth anymore? You basically had a choice of three. Yeah. That night, you narrowed down one because you wanted to do hospital yep. birth, and then you had two that you were kind of back and forth with. Yeah. Um, none of whom you had ever met before, but all available to. Yeah. To take you on if you if you met their criteria, and then yeah, you like go to the doctor's office in the middle of Beverly Hills uh, at four or five o'clock in the morning. And you're like, I'm four centimeters. And you're this contracting. I'm so excited. And you're already four yeah. centimeters. I was just happy, was happy that my body was doing what it was supposed to do without any help. That's, that's what I was happy about. Unexpectedly, have your kid with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just um, yeah, Labor Day surprise. I think is a good. <laughs> Title. I, there were more surprises than I even knew about. Had you guys talked about breach birth before? Had we talked about it? I mean, you, had, you knew you were breach, but I mean, did you look into like the different pros and cons of vaginal birth to cesarean? Um, did we, talk, we, could we? We talked so extensively about um, how we how we would ideally deal with birth. Um, you know, had I started contractions without the water breaking, we knew that we wanted to stay home as long as possible. We had a meeting with the doula to to go through the planned birth of where to where to labor, when to go in, if there's traffic, all this other stuff. There was an established plan that was pretty good. And then when it was breach, kind of all hell broke loose because we didn't have anything. Then when Sunday came and at 1.30 in the morning she wakes me up from the couch um, I thought to myself, ooh, if I'd fallen asleep in the bed, this might not have happened. <laughs> um, that was, don't know that was why, my, that but was, okay. <laughs> that was my first thought. Um, we had no doctor. We had nothing. Nothing. So between 1.30. We had, no traffic. <laughs> That's true, which that is rare. That is true. You were worried about the traffic. <laughs> it was yeah. Sunday on Labor Day weekend and in the middle of the night. No traffic, no traffic. which was our biggest concern because we live far away from uh, Cedars, which is where we delivered. Yeah. Yeah. And we had toured Cedars. She had selected Cedars. And the fact that we, like you said, found the doctor, 
that would do a vaginal breech birth on a Sunday, and he didn't have another patient, and he was available. I mean, to even do it was the stars were kind of aligned. Yeah, a lot of things came together. Yeah. Had you seen? Had you guys seen the documentary we made about? I breech? did. You did. I did. Um, so not bottoms up. What is it called? Uh, heads up. <laughs> heads up. <laughs> bottoms up would have been great. <laughs> No that's, problem that's with the sequel. Up. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Bottoms up. up is right after this podcast. They're both <laughs> expressions. Um, yes. Um, yeah, I had seen it for sure. And I remember Dr. Um, Dr. Paul Crane was on there, actually. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I'd seen it. And he's very comfortable with Breach. You already had a vaginal birth, and that's yes, his big exactly. thing. Once he's, you have, he's very comfortable. He's yeah. done many of them. And, uh, you know uh, what? At the end of that documentary um, was what I think was a big part of sealing the deal for me in doing it unmedicated because the video that you show at the end of a woman delivering a breech birth vaginally on her bed at home um, was so peaceful. And I know that that doesn't always happen in all births. I mean, some women are louder than others, whatever it is. Um, but it just gave me confidence that this could actually be a reality and a positive one, too. Um, and another thing also was when I was with Dr. Crane in his office and after he checked me, he said, you're four centimeters. And then he says, I don't know if I'd already told him I wanted to do this unmedicated or not, but he says, I don't usually push the epidural unless the mom wants it, but I think you're perfectly capable of doing this unmedicated. Mm. And to hear that from my doctor, which was a big contrast from the doctor who delivered River, mm-hmm. it was a huge deal for me. So having the, you know, the confidence of my husband, having the confidence of my doctor um, and my doula, of course, She's like all of that empowering. together, I was like, I can actually do this. I have the village and the team of mm. people that I need to make this happen. Um, yeah. So as Dave said, the stars just kind of aligned, even though it was a, you know, heads up yeah. <laughs> situation. Yeah. A little surprise. How was the, um, how, how was that actual experience of pushing your baby out? You can't compare it exactly to your first because you were medicated the first time. But was there, I mean, there's such a fear society around birth in general and breach even more so. Mm-hmm. And it's not, you know, not everybody who's breech is a good candidate for vaginal birth. Um, I'd never suggest that anybody who's breech just go into it lightly. But you can always uh, explore the option. Yeah. Um, some people are great candidates. Some people are not good candidates and there's everything in between uh, the film is headsupfilm.com it's called Heads Up the Disappearing Art of Vaginal Breach Delivery and your Dr. Paul Crane is in there along with a few others um, and the goal is not to really encourage people to have a vaginal breach birth but to know that it's an option and to be right. able to have that option available to them if, if they're a good candidate but you're yeah. probably one of the greatest candidates but one thing I will say for anybody who's listening and who is interested in having a vaginal breach birth um, is that there's, or, or actually an unmedicated birth in general, which is, and I, I know Sarah went through this too. She can describe it herself, um, but I definitely went through this, and it was very much um, watching Sarah do it too, which is informing yourself as much as possible. It's um, reading the most positive stories you can find about what you're about to do, um, watching positive videos, really kind of you know not allowing yourself to ever fall into the negativity of some stories, which are not as positive. Um, but those are not as common as one would think. You know, it's like we grow up in this world watching movies where women are screaming to death, mm-hmm. having babies, pushing them out. And you grow up thinking this is something I have to go through in order to have my baby in my arms versus an amazing experience and journey that will lead to this wonderful baby in my arms. Um, and so, you know, I really I, I read as much as I could and watched as many beautiful videos as I could, peaceful ones. Even if my birth wouldn't end up being, you know, that silent, I had that in the back of my head. We are going to take a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. (laughs) Was it noisy? My birth? Yeah. Yeah. I want to say during the, but Dave's nodding his head. <laughs> it was my <laughs> Whatever you do with your face and your jaw, um, you know, if it's tense up here, then you're going to be tense down there too. Yeah. Um, and so I made a very conscious effort to try and keep my face relaxed through all the contractions. And then another thing too is your throat. If you're making low visceral sounds, uh, like that, everything's open. If you start going up into this, like, uh, your throat is closed. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? Because you have to close mm-hmm. your throat to make that high-pitched sound, and that's going to happen down there too. And so I remember maybe in the more intense parts of it, I was starting to make higher-pitched sounds, and my doula literally went, Danny, Danny, low sounds, low sounds. And she brought me back down to the pit mm-hmm. of you know, my core, mm-hmm. um, which kind of helped me relax all over again. And listen, I'm not going to pretend it didn't hurt. Of course it hurt. Like your body is doing something incredible. But it was an experience that I would absolutely go through again. In That's all honesty, great. was there panic? Where no. was nobody around? It? Dr. Crane was relaxed. The nurses. Everybody relaxed. Everybody was relaxed. Dr. Crane never even left the room. Oh yeah, he's my amazing. eyes were he's shut one the of whole a time. Kind. I mean, you're also the doctor that you switch from is also kind of amazing. Um, right. And he's, you know, most doctors would be like, no, I don't do breach, and you shouldn't do breach, and. He's mm-hmm. not like that. He's like, I don't do breach, but there are people who do breach. Right. I feel like that's the way it's supposed to be. That's true informed consent. Right. I was just at a breach birth at Cedars uh, last week, and um, also her, her second baby. And it was a little more chaotic because her doctor was coming from the valley. And when we got into the hospital, she was only a few centimeters. And within 20 minutes, she was complete. So they originally told her doctor, uh, you know, nah, go back to sleep. It was in the middle of the morning, too. She's only four or five centimeters, and then they were called them in a panic. They're like, oh, she's already nine, almost 10 centimeters, and a whole bunch of people ran in. They were they were terrified what would happen if the baby would come out breach, and he wasn't there yet. And so they were just kind of like, hold it in, hold it in. You know, they, weren't, they were saying don't push, but that essentially means hold it in, the baby's That's just naturally coming earlier, out. That's what I was saying earlier. Your body's going to push it out when it's ready to push out, regardless of what effort you make. It was kind of neat because she was open to having people come in and watch because there's not a lot of um, breach delivery mm-hmm. going on. This this is another doctor, Dr. Brock, who is on our breach podcast, um, who, who is doing a lot of them now. And um, the the residents want to learn. They're curious yeah. over there. So she was like, oh, you know, I don't care. Just whoever wants to come is fine. And she didn't have a doula. It was just me. I was coaching her. And um, you she are had, a doula. I, I am a doula, but sometimes I do body work, and there's a doula there. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, she had her best friend, who was amazing, um, and it was me. And I was looking at her, working with her breathing. And when I originally started in that room, there were like three people in the room. And I didn't even realize. I turned around, and there were literally 25 people in there. Wow. Um, and it was cool that they all wanted to experience it and see it. Uh, but I was like, where did these 25 people even come from? At, right. uh, it was 5 o'clock in the morning. There were some labor and delivery nurses. There was a couple of pediatric nurses. I think there were two helpful Honda guys. I'm not sure how they got in there. <laughs> it just you, seemed like... Are they sponsoring you? Because they... Need <laughs> <laughs> it just seemed like everybody was in there. But it was it was like a neat birth, and it was like almost like nobody was panicky. It would just seem like... Yeah. It was almost like thunderous applause when the baby there was, came out. How many people were in the room for us, Dave? Because my eyes were closed the whole time, to be honest with you, because I was sort of in the zone. But I hear that there was a few pediatricians, There was about 15 people. Was there really? Yeah, it got wow. pretty busy in there. Well, no, and just like Dr. Berlin said, they all wanted to see it. Mm-hmm. So wow. there was a whole staff of pediatricians in there. But, I guess but as soon, soon as they heard the baby cry, they all left. Yeah, they bring a, they bring... For breech births at that hospital, they always bring a pediatric team, and that each one sense. has like a different. This one is like the resuscitator, and this one is a. Right. Each one has a goal, and if they need anything, boom, it happens right away. Yeah. Um, but as soon as the baby looks great, they just take That's off. Good. And it's a lot. By the time you come to, it's a lot more quiet. Yeah. One of the few things. One of the things I do remember Dr. Crane saying. He he said something about episiotomy. I don't know if he asked me or if he asked for the sky. I don't know what he. How that came up, I just heard the word episiotomy, and I just remember like just saying, nope, no, no, thank you. Yeah. He's like, okay, we can, all right, all right I will determine this as we go along. Then I said, that's fine. Um, and fortunately, I did not tear at all. Um, no stitches, no nothing, which is miraculous. Whatever, I got one stitch. but um, And another thing that really, really helped um, was Dave made me laugh during some of these contractions. Um he was he's pulling faces but he did and it really did help um maybe it wasn't intentional was it? oh it was intentional oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, i mean so was it, well talk to us about the comedy was it jokes or was it no yeah. he just stories that so were funny dave, so dave so dave and i have this thing where like if if he's doing something i'm like can you just can you stop doing that please um he'll be like oh Oh, I'm gonna keep doing it, now. <laughs> you know. And, and you know, in that situation, it felt so ridiculous to me. So every time I was, you know, on a not having contraction, I, I had two minutes to rest and just, you know, recover energy. And Dave was like, "Babe, are you hungry? Do you need a snack? Do you want water?" I'm like, "No, no, I just, I just need to sleep. Just, st- I love you. Stop talking to me." Um, 
And then a few minutes later, he'd be like, babe, do you, do you want some water? I was like, no, I honestly, you need to stop talking. I love you so much. Stop talking to me. <laughs> I don't want to talk right now. And then at some point, he gets really close to my face. He's like, hey, babe, babe, you want to talk? You need some water? I was like, oh, my gosh, please leave me alone. But it was so ridiculous that he would do this in my mind in a moment like this where I'm supposed to be so focused that he just broke me out of that. You know, I need to focus. I need to focus. Getting I need to focus. Head. Yeah, I was getting in my head, head and he yeah. helped me probably Which unknowingly really good, totally yeah. relax and just laugh for a second. I think, Dave, um, I'm sometimes overbooked and some people want other male doulas. I think <laughs> yeah, I'm some side gigs for you. You're going to be the male doula. Dave, the silent the doula. doula. Any, uh, you should make doula it all, say audibly no right now. <laughs> yeah. I said yes. <laughs> he said yes. 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 Great. My husband's going to be seeing other naked women. Woo. <laughs> um, all right. In a moment, we're going to take a break and then come back with Sarah's Labor Day surprise. But, uh, Dave, any final final uh, word on this experience from uh, your perspective? It was kind of amazing. It was sad in a way that other people don't get the chance, that it's kind of a lowest common denominator sort of thing. I'm sure you'll talk about that later. Um, other chance because the baby's breech? Because it's automatically what they resort to. And mm. it's kind of, I was in the military and the lowest common denominator makes all the rules. So if you if someone drinks a car battery full of acid on base, they're gonna ban all the car batteries on base. That's a fictitious, you know, story, but you know, the breaches are going away. And, and our experience was so, it couldn't be any better, you know. And, and the candidates, obviously, the, 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 uh, the protocol to decide if someone can be breached is, is there. And if it is allowable to be breached, like our experience was so easy and so great that had she been under the knife, you know, that, that would have been quite unnecessary. So that's the only thing. Yeah. Um, it's true. And sometimes people just come into the hospital and they didn't even know they were breached and they're progressing very quickly and the baby's coming out and they don't know what to do. These The younger and younger doctors, as the older ones who have that breach experience retire, they don't know what to do. And so it happens where they literally have to push the baby back <gasps> in. I just heard a woman talk about this the other day where she said that they were like, oh, we had they, they had to push my baby back inside of me so oh. that they could do a C-section and pull it out. I yeah. can't imagine the horror of that. All I know is that if there is a natural disaster and the hospital is out of play and a woman has is breached and is going into labor, no one's going to know how to deliver this baby right. if it's the knife is not a possibility because there's no hospital functioning in that moment. The good news is... And it's in its early stages, but there is another hospital here, California Hospital, where you almost uh, you that's where I almost delivering. went. Yeah, um, they have enough doctors who do breach, mm -hmm. and they are just recruited another doctor who does breach. And uh, we're going to actually go show our film there next week to all of the medical staff and have a big discussion about it. Yeah. They're very open. They want to be able to offer that choice, and they want to sort of be able to set up 24-7 coverage. So no matter who wow. comes there or when they come there. I just don't know how cool. young doctors wouldn't want to learn, just even if out of curiosity. It's a fascinating event. Well, part of the problem is we don't have the capacity to teach because it's not happening. So you need to see a lot of them and be hands-on with a lot of them to have the comfort. I guess so. What is it, 4% 4, 4 of births are breached? 4% are breached, so 160,000 in the United States every year, which is a lot. It's one every four minutes across the country. But in a city like Los Angeles, we have so many births. And Cedar sinai alone has around eight or 9,000 births a year. So 4% of that are breached. You know, there's Cedar enough. Cedar is fantastic. Who was Cedar? Cedar sinai was just a fantastic place great. to give birth. The staff, the nurses... Um, yeah. Yeah, we I had, was we really pleasantly. You were uh, you were there too. I love their um, I love their Jello. They have really good <laughs> Jello, <laughs> among other things. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're gonna come back and hear Sarah's epic birth story. <laughs> doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a. Whole 